Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic week wherever you are in this planet of ours and all the different weather events and things like that that are going on around the world. Wouldn't it be nice to just have a time where we could just exhale and say that the, the world's perfect? I don't know whether we'll ever live long enough to see that, but we can always live in hope, can't we? So this week's Simply Tarot Card of the Week is a really positive one. It's a, a one that it's one of my favourites. It's called The Star. Now, it's brightness and hope, and we could all do with a little bit of brightness and hope in our world at the moment, could bring excesses. So be careful not to become too greedy. Now, sometimes when we have things in our lives that may be a little bit in excess, we sometimes then forget to sort of share or share it around or sort of put some away for a rainy day. And remember that there was times in our lives where we didn't necessarily have as much as what we've got today. So it's a time to sort of, you know, count your blessings, yes, by all means if you're lucky enough to have sort of brightness and happiness in your life which I hope everybody has to some degree then make sure that you count your blessings and make sure that you know if you've got a little bit of surplus of money either donate some to a charity or put some away for a rainy day or just buy yourself that little special extra treat I mean we're coming up to the very busy time of the year and a very expensive time of the year with Christmas looming so I know that you know people are looking for ways to make a little bit of extra money and maybe this is just the indication that if you look a little bit harder there might be some way there of bringing a little bit of extra money into your life at the moment but just be careful that you know as you can see on the card there she is tipping out the water out of the jugs into the pond that you know she's got more than what she needs So, you know, if you've got more than what you need, make sure you share a little bit with someone else. So it's a really, really big week astrologically this week. And um, I'm going to start this way and say, well, well done to everybody as we've navigated our way through Pluto and Capricorn since 2008. It seems like a marathon. Well, hold on to your hat. We're ready for the next marathon as Pluto has just moved into Aquarius and it will be there for the next 20 years years yes you heard me right the next 20 years so it's going to be 2044 before we see it move into Pisces if we're all still with us and I'm still on the show then that'll be amazing in another 20 years time so that then we'll be talking about you know Pluto moving into into Pisces but Pluto into Aquarius look there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be written over the years about how Pluto actually works in Aquarius what does it mean for each and every one of us no matter what your star sign is I've been in astrology for a very 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 long time now and I can honestly say to you this is one of the ones that stumped me a little bit that how do I describe Pluto in Aquarius I understand the energy of Pluto and I understand the energy of Aquarius, but how do you marry those two together that it in some way becomes a very personal thing in explaining to people how this is going to work? Now, the first thing that I want to be very clear on, when a a, a major planet or a slow-moving planet like Pluto is moving into a sign in that first period of time, now bearing in mind he's going to be here for 20 years, so we're probably looking at in the first 18 months to two years of Pluto moving into Aquarius is where the intensity is going to be felt. It's going to be sort of like, oh, my goodness, here we go. This is what it means. This is what it means for me personally. It wasn't what I was expecting. How do I manoeuvre my way around it? What's the best plan of attack? How do we gain the maximum benefit out of it? And then he will sort of settle down into a, a more consistent sort of routine, I suppose, in a sense where we get used to the energy and it's sort of not as daunting as it is as he first moves in. So, and then again, in 20 years' time, as we're coming to the end of it, we'll feel that real ramp up of energy before he makes his exit. So Pluto is the planet of transformation. Pluto rules the underworld. It rules anything that needs to be transformed in our life. Now, lessons of Pluto are slow, deliberate, and definite. They are lessons that you will never forget. They're not something that you can turn around and say, oh, well, I've learnt that and we move on to something else next week. Pluto's effects are a lifetime. You know, it it sort of, you know, it, it starts to shape our personality. It shapes how we deal with the world, how we make decisions moving forward, things like that. Lessons under Pluto are are lessons that are never, ever forgotten. Now, with the Aquarian energy, the Aquarian energy is a fixed energy. So it means that they they can be stubborn and pig-headed. They don't necessarily like change unless they instigate it, and that's the Aquarian energy. So this means each and every one of us, no matter what your star sign is, we've got a plan of attack. You know, we've got a life that's going on and we've got some things going on that we really don't want to change 
or things that we're very comfortable with or become very stubborn and thick-headed when someone suggests maybe we can look at it in a different way. We get our back up and say, oh, no, I'm not doing that or no, I have, you know, that's not right for me or whatever, without even giving it any thought. Now, that's going to be the difficult bit here with Pluto in Aquarius because no matter what your sign is, our automatic response is going to be, oh, that doesn't affect me or I don't want it that way or I'm not going to do that. So I'm concerned that with Pluto here sort of saying, well, okay, if you want to be this stubborn, then I'll intensify the lesson until you really grasp it, until you really sort of get hold of what I'm trying to share with you. So we have to all be very careful of that is sort of say, okay, look, let me think about it. Don't just automatically say no because that's your automatic response. Sort of have a different approach to it maybe. The Aquarian energy also is about being sort of very guarded about our emotions. A lot of people say to me, Aquarians are cold. They have no feeling. Well, that's not true. They just don't wear their heart on their sleeve. They they do have very strong feelings and they feel things in the pit of their stomach. They just don't necessarily share it with the world or share a response with the world. So again, I'm coming back to, are we going to become a society where we sort of become blasé to things like shootings or weather events or things that happen that sort of, oh, well, that's not our problem. So we sort of emotionally detach and, 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 and sort of don't seem as if we care. That could be a real concern. That is something that we could do. We could sort of all automatically sort of say, well, that's someone else's problem or it doesn't affect me or I'm not going to allow it to affect me. And that's a real concern because I don't want us to see us to lose our empathy and our humanity towards people that are struggling or in trouble or might need a hand or just being a good human being. The other part of the Aquarian energy is the love that is given. It's... Uh, it, it, you know, the Leo energy is the love we give. The Aquarian energy is the love we receive. Now, quite often, you know, people sort of say to me, well, what's a catchphrase you can say for Aquarians? And I say, well, uh, they know everything. They sort of tend to sort of can be able to talk on any subject. And if they don't know the answer, they still know everything. But, you know, they can be seen as a little bit of a know-it-all sort of energy. So, again, I want to stress, no matter what your star sign is, don't come across as if you know everything. If you're not an expert on the subject, then maybe sort of say, look, this is my opinion or this is how I look at it, not necessarily come across as an authority. I think it's going to be very interesting as Uranus unfolds. Um, Uranus, I beg your pardon as we see that Pluto unfolds in Aquarius, that how we do things and how we look at things in our lives, because it's going to be a very, very interesting concept. Yes, obviously, it's going to affect Aquarians more than it's going to affect the rest of us. And the opposite sign of Leo, and it's going to affect the other air signs, which is Gemini, and Libra, but not so much. But it's really, really going to transform the Aquarian lifestyle and the Aquarian landscape. So all I can say to Aquarians is hold on to your hat, buckle in. I know what I went through when Pluto was in Sagittarius and, you know, and I thought I had a good grip on it. And let me assure you, I didn't quite have the grip that I thought I did or the knowledge or the understanding, even for all my work in astrology. But what I can say to you is, you know, be prepared for the ride of your life. Some things will be good and some things not so good. So, you know, as long as you're being true to yourself and you're working with the energy to the best of your ability, that's all that Pluto can ask. And if he brings along changes in your life, embrace them. You know, maybe unconsciously you've been ready for this change for some time. So that's a really important thing. So let's get back to the normal part of the astrology where we talk about happy birthday to the Scorpios. We're in the last couple of days of Scorpio. It's been an interesting time with, in the Scorpio energy, hasn't it? You know, we've seen elections around the world and people are still sort of saying, I don't know how that happened. Well, people voted people in and that's how it happens. That's how elections happen. But it's also been a time where we're starting to see weather events starting to ramp up, you know, weather centers seems to be sort of changing. There seems to be more water around than what there was. And people are talking more about climate change. And I know we've been talking about climate change for a long time, but it seems to be in this last month, it seems to be back in the, the news cycle again, where people are sort of starting to talk about it again. And Scorpio does rule water. So I just think it's interesting that people are starting to talk about it again. So Mercury's in Capricorn, Mercury's in Capricorn, Mercury's in Sagittarius. And what that means for each and every of the 12 star signs is that we have to be very careful at how we communicate. 
make sure that we don't get aggressive, we don't get cranky, because the Sagittarian energy is fiery, can be outspoken, sort of doesn't sort of really think quite often before they open their mouth, it just sort of comes tumbling out. And I'm a Sag, I should know, I know all about kind of things not not thinking about things. I've tried to learn to think about it over the years so that my communication is clear and everybody can understand it. But it doesn't matter what your star sign is. Sometimes we get so passionate about something that we get so focused on it, it just comes out and we don't sort of edit it or think about it. We just blurt it out like a, like a child does. They're very open. They're very honest. They just blurt something out and that's the way it is. And that's the energy that's sitting around communication at the moment is just being able to blurt things out. Now, Mercury is actually opposing, which means it's its opposite side of the chart, is Jupiter in Gemini. Now, Jupiter in Gemini has is going to be there till about February next year. Jupiter is actually going retrograde at the moment. So Jupiter is sort of affecting how fire signs are thinking at the moment in as much, oh, well, Jupiter is affecting the, the, the air signs and Mercury is affecting the fire signs. So we'll go back through those. The fire signs are Aries, Leo, Sag. The air signs are Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. So again, that that air sign sort of connection. So it's it's a time there where we need to be very careful about what we communicate about. If we want to try and get a new project off the ground, we need to make sure that we've got the information there if we're going to go into a meeting. Don't go in there half hour. Go in there with as much information as you can. They'll stop you if they think you're talking too much or you're trying to give them too much information, but make sure that you're articulate, that you're clear in what you want to achieve because, you know, Mercury is sort of saying it's great, there's some brilliant ideas coming up at the moment, but make sure they're formulated. Don't go in there before something's really ready to be presented just because you've had this brilliant idea. Go away and think about it and formulate it a little bit more really, really important. So we still have quite a bit of emphasis sitting in Pisces. We still have Neptune, the planet of illusion and delusion, which rules Pisces is still there till the end of the year. So Neptune is sort of doing his final little dance there, sort of helping to keep the creative juices flowing, particularly for Pisceans, as it is for other water signs. So the other water signs are Cancer and Scorpio. The opposite sign is Virgo. So, but Pisceans have really been getting, you know, really very structured in the last few years with, you know, Neptune there bumping up the creativity, but Saturn also the planet of discipline and structure has been in Pisces as well. So it's sort of like, you know, bringing structure to the creative side of people. And I have lots of Pisces friends and family members, and it's been really interesting to see them sort of not so much grow up, but sort of grow into their real Pisces creative side where that they're sort of doing things and they're planning things and they're looking at different ways to sort of maximize their creativity. And it's almost like they've gone from teenagers into adults and it's really lovely to see. Finally, I want to wrap up the astrology section with Uranus. Now, you, we've talked about Uranus many, many times here on the show. Uranus is like the tower card in the in, in the tarot. It's the unusual or the unexpected. Uranus is also retrograde until February 2025. Now, Uranus is in Taurus, so it's in an Earth sign. So Uranus is sort of asking all the Taurians and the Virgos and the Capricorns that you've got to sort of stop being so fixed and rigid. Be flexible with your plans. Look at things that might need to change in your life. If you're not prepared to make changes, let me assure you, Uranus will come along like a bolt of light and strike the ground and create changes in a matter of seconds or minutes. And you won't be able to go back to the way things were before. And this will be because you're not working with the energy of Uranus. Uranus will give you so long of them to say, right, that's it, had enough of this time for change so be very careful about things that you may be putting off in your life or ignoring or avoiding or something like that because you can be a little bit stubborn and pig-headed and know everything and sort of you know a little bit like an Aquarian in that way you can be very fixed and rigid on how you perceive your life should be going where Uranus might see it in a different way and say well look you know you've been stuck in this rut for a very very long time it's time now to break free of that I'm going to give you the opening for that. So try and work with the energy. None of these energies are anything to be feared. It's about something about working with the energy, understanding why things are changing in your life, and go with the flow. Don't try and swim against the tide. It's much easier to be a log and float down the river than it is to try and go up the river the wrong way. And that's what life is all about. And when you understand these cycles and you work with them, it does make life so much easier. So we're going to take our first call, which is... Chalcia in Nashville in Tennessee. What a very pretty name, Chalcia. How can I help you today? 
Hi, thank you so much. Um, I would just love any message from a highest and greatest good, please. Okay, all right. The first thing that they're showing me is why do you feel like you've hit a roadblock? Is that how you feel at the moment in your life? It's like you were hurtling along nicely and then all of a sudden, bang, stop. It's like I've got to stop and take a little bit of notice of where I'm going. Is that how you're feeling at the moment? Yes. Yeah, look, they're showing me that this was very necessary. Look, what I want to say to you is sometimes we can be ahead of our own timetable if I can put it that way but you know you did your lessons you learnt them really well you did them fast and then all of a sudden it's like we've got to get you to a stop and say let, let everything catch up before we go into the next part of things I think you should be really proud of yourself if, if you're one of the rare people I can say that you've been you know you've done all your lessons so well that they're giving you a rest that's great um, they are showing me though that look you know obviously it's going to get busy between now and the end of the year but what they're showing me is the early part of 2025 is when your life for you personally is going to start to ramp up have you been thinking about a potential job change in the new year? Because that's what they're showing me. Okay. Yeah, I've been toggling back and forth between a couple of things. Yeah. Well, they're showing me the strongest time of that is in the new year. They're not saying don't look, don't get prepared or take, you know, some extra training on or whatever, but be ready somewhere between sort of February to April is when it's at its strongest, when you'll find what it is that you're looking for. There's no point in changing your job to just be back in something very similar to what you're doing and be back in this position in six months. We want the next change to be something that you can grow into, something that has potential for, you know, promotions and things like that. The other thing that they were showing me was question marks over where you're living so is that the fact that you're thinking of moving or you're thinking of making some changes there and sometimes they just show me that you know and it can be something as simple as I'm buying a new couch but you know they show it to me as a change yeah um we have definitely been cleaning up around the area um and thinking about possibly moving mm -hmm. yeah look I don't think it's going to be in the first part of next year. I think it's going to be a bit like the job situation. It'll come into your mind and then it'll go away and then it comes back and then it goes away. But somewhere around May through to July is when I think the decision will be made. And I do actually think you will move, but I feel it'll be a very calculated decision. You know, like it's something that you sit down and you talk about as a family and, you know, we really sort of want to get this next part right as well. It's like, 2025 is 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 about any major decisions that are being made are not just short term, they're for the longer term. So, you know, we've got to be very careful at the choices and the decisions that we make, that we make sure that they stand the test of time for a number of years. But when you say you're going to move, I didn't feel you were going to move out of the area, though. I didn't feel you were going to leave Tennessee. I still felt you would stay in Tennessee. But yeah, just no, sort of move a little bit further away from where you are. Yeah. Yeah, more into the woods. <laughs> yeah, and it feels good. It feels really good. So you said going into the woods. So doing, looking to do that, besides, you know, making the family a lot happier, is there something that you're planning to do? And I'm not talking about your day job, but are you planning to take on board something or start up a little hobby business or something connected with the move? Because I'm seeing something to come out of that as well. Um. I would love to run a bed and breakfast one day, um, right. but that's like a dream. Yeah, but maybe what we've got to look at in this first part of the move is keeping that in the equation as well, even if it's not the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe getting enough land where maybe you can put another dwelling on or something like that to, to realise that dream a bit further down the track or something. There's, yes, that exactly. Showing yeah, they were showing me income to be made in the future from the move. Okay. As a, as a business thing, not, you know, not, you know, the increase in the house price. I'm, you know, they were yep. sort of showing me that. And they were saying to me sort of like, don't lose sight of that dream. Do you know what I mean? That's got to be a major part of the move as well, if that makes sense, not just what suits the family. It's like a two-pronged move. Yes, we need a bigger house and, you know, more room for the, the family to spread out. But then this is also equally as important, but not just yet. You know, we've got to keep the whole picture together, if that makes sense. But look, I think it's very exciting. It's, I'm really good. So enjoy the rest. Thank you. Okay. 
put your feet up, watch a couple of movies and, you know, get ready for next year because it's going to be so busy. You'll, you'll look back and say, gee, I wish I'd sat down a bit more. But that's okay. You, you, you like being busy. That's good. Yep. So I hope that's helped you. And we're going to move on now with Hayley in Chandler in Arizona. Are you there, Hayley? Hello. Hi, Hayley. Do you have a question I can answer for you, sweetie? Um, I guess, um, like, am, am I going to still be with the same person? That I'm with. Okay. All right. Do you mind sharing with me just their first initial of their first name, please, Haley, so I can make sure uh, I tune in. in yeah, T. 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 Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Really, really interesting because the energy I'm picking up around that person is that I don't know that they know what they want. It's like one minute they want this, the next minute they want that, and it's sort of like it's very confusing to try and keep up with their aspirations, their dreams and what they want. Would it be fair to say that they have trouble committing to the relationship? Um, yeah. Yeah, because that's the energy I, I'm picking up. It's not that, that they're unhappy with you. They just, it's like I get so far and I freeze. Yeah, I mean, we're like in a distant relationship um, for oh, like okay. four more years, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that doesn't help the relationship when you're not, you know, around the corner from each other and can sort of, you know, engage each other's facial expressions. It's always harder in a long distance one. Look, I know it's better today. We've got video chats and all that sort of stuff, but it still doesn't replace being in the room with someone, does it? Um, no. Look, I don't feel that he wants to end the relationship. I'm just going to say to you that, you know, he goes so far and then he stops and then he'll come so far again and then he stops. It's like you're going to have to get used to that stop start sort of energy with him. It's sort of like he hits the panic button, that everything's going great, that it's almost like he's expecting it's going to fall over. So he stops and waits for that, you know, what might happen. So this seems to be very entrenched in him from his past. So I think we've got to be patient. We've got to help him work through that. And when he gets to these points where he's distant and sort of pulls away from you, don't sort of keep saying what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, because all you're doing is exacerbating the situation. Try and manoeuvre yourself in a different sort of way and sort of, you know, like if he's being a bit distant, then I'd write bigger text messages or send emails or, you know, send more smiley faces or something like that to just let him know that, you know, from your end, everything's okay. And I think that will sort of slowly start to penetrate to him that, hang on a minute, this is not a bad situation. There's nothing for me to panic about. There's nothing for me to sort of pull back on. So you said you've been in this long distance relationship for four years. Has there ever been any talk of the two of you moving closer to each other? Oh, well, no, it's actually um, him being incarcerated. So, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Well, that, yeah, that makes one of those things. And, I mean, yeah. we kind of had issues where with, like, trust and him cheating prior to him, like, going. Right. And I'm just wondering if it's even worth it to stay five years faithful to him until he gets out, you know? Right. So just yeah, that makes it a very, very tricky situation for you then, doesn't it? I mean, because, you know, you can't sort of, even have video chats or things as much as you want. Look, I think I think what you need to do is sort of, for the moment, not try and make a decision. Let's just see where things go in the next few months. And I think once we get into the new year, and particularly around February, March, you'll wake up one day and you'll know exactly what the answer is. It won't be that sort of, you know, you had to sit down and agonise over it. You'll just let everything flow the best way you can at the moment and not try and force it one way or the other. Just get on with your life and sort of tell the universe that you're you're open to suggestion, you know, whatever's the right path for you to show me, you know, whether it's waiting for him or whether it's opening yourself up to a new relationship, don't put a definite, this is what I want on it. Just open yourself up and say to the universe, I'm in your hands, you show me, you show me what's right for me. And by that, then you'll start to see things will become a lot clearer. I mean, look, I don't doubt that he loves you, but if the fact that if he wasn't faithful to you before he went inside and then he has this real commitment phobia, it makes it really right. difficult to sort of turn around and say, you know, that in the time that he's been inside, yes, he's had a lot of time to soul search and think about things. Has anything really changed? Because this may right. just be who he is, you know, what he was, the, the 
the skills he was born with, how he copes with things. And, you know, it's very hard for somebody to that has a commitment phobia to turn around and then try and just commit to one person. It's very common. It goes hand in hand with not being faithful because it's sort of like, oh, well, I don't have to commit. If, you know, if I'm sleeping around or if I'm going whichever way the wind blows, I don't have to make decisions. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. I'm not sure that yeah. that part's been fixed. I wish I could say it was, but, you know, I still see him sort of, you know, daydreaming over you and then the next minute he sort of he shut the door again. And it's like, well, how do we keep that door open? And that's why I think the best thing to do is hand it over to the universe. And, you know, write yourself okay. a little mantra, you know, and sort of say it every day and, and you know, take notice of what the universe sort of suggests to you. You don't have to make a decision today. They were showing me sort of somewhere around February, March, you're just going to get out of bed one day and say, right, that's it. I know exactly what I'm going to do and it'll be as automatic as brushing your teeth of a morning okay. and you'll know then which way to go so if up until now Haley, i think give yourself a little bit of breathing space and just you know allow yourself to say i don't know you know okay. i'm happy to go along with things for the moment but i'm going to start looking after Haley. and i think that's the best words of advice yeah. i can give you is start looking after yourself sweetie anyway that's where we're going to leave it i wish you a very happy thanksgiving and merry christmas and all those wonderful things so we've come to the end of the show again each week i always feature a song that has, has been either driving me nuts during the week or something that's come to me as I'm preparing for the show. This week, it's a little bit different. It, in a couple of days' time, it'll be seven years since we lost David Cassidy, and I'm a huge David Cassidy fan. So I'm going to leave you with one of David's most beautiful songs today. But I also want to pay um, respect to his drummer, Terry Cote, who made the beautiful jewellery that I'm wearing today. This is part of the Cassidy Rose collection that she made in David's honour and beautiful bracelets and everything like that. And Terry is, still remains faithful to David to this day and she makes beautiful jewellery and she's an amazing musician. But this week I'm going to leave you with one of my ultimate favourites of David's. And no, it's not I Think I Love You. It's actually Cherish. And I think Cherish is a beautiful song that we can all get behind that, you know, love is a beautiful thing and we should cherish the people that are in our lives because we never know when they're not going to be around to cherish them. So until next week, why don't you enjoy some of David Cassidy's beautiful songs? He's got so many beautiful songs out there. And I also want to pay respects to, we, we lost Gordon Lightfoot about 12 months ago as well. And I think he was an amazing singer and entertainer as well. And one of my favourites, and if you want a second song to listen to, you could listen to one of Gordon Lightfoot's most popular songs, which was If You Could Read My Mind, Love. What a tale it's, it would tell. So until next week, have a great week. Enjoy David and enjoy... Gordon Lightfoot. Until next week, bye for now.